Hello everyone and welcome back to Nate the Hoof Guy. On today's video, we are gonna be looking at this wild looking corkscrew claw. Now the funny thing about this foot is that it's the only one that looks like it. The other right front foot, it's a little long, but for the most part looks normal. The back feet, they look pretty normal too. But this left front is extremely misshapen. And we'll talk about the significance of that as we go through this trim. But let's get this foot picked up and take a look and see what we've got. Now on a normal foot, it's pretty easy to envision what needs to be removed. But when we're looking at a foot like this, you kind of have to use your imagination. So let's take a look at this left claw here. You can see that outside edge is a little high. I'm going to bring that down. On the corkscrewed claw side, that inside portion of that claw is going to need to be removed along with the, obviously, that toe section. It's going to be kind of at an angle to get that correct sole depth and that correct sole thickness to make that, that sole align properly with the ground when I'm done. A lot of times when I begin working on a corkscrew claw, I'm going to do those initial cuts with my knife. Normally, you'll see me use my grinder to do this type of stuff. The reason I do use the knife here is because of that rotation in that claw and where that growth is on that claw. It's hard to get the head of that grinder uh, positioned correctly to make that cut right. So I take a lot of that material out with my knife. That gives me a lot more room to work with my grinder, and then I can get that sole just the way I want it. So on this lateral claw, all I'm gonna do is bring down that heel height a little bit. My end goal here is to balance these two heels out. Right now, that, that heel is a little too high. And then I'm gonna shorten the toe as well on this lateral claw. And that's basically all I'm gonna do with that one. When I move over to the medial claw, the corkscrewed claw, I'm gonna continue to work this angle, but I need to do this in very small increments because I don't have a lot of room to work when we have that rotation. That outside wall, even though it looks like it's really got a lot of depth to it, because of that rotation, there's not a lot of sole thickness on that outside wall there, so I have to do this carefully. I'll take a little bit off, check it, take a little bit more off until I get it right. I don't wanna go uh, too crazy at first because, of, like I said, with that distortion, it's kinda hard to judge that, that sole thickness on that outside wall. So what causes corkscrew claw or what made this foot do what it did? And there are several things that cause corkscrew claw. First and the most predominant thing that we see is nutritional imbalances similar to founder and horses that result in a condition known as laminitis. And what ends up happening is we get softening of that connection between that pedal bone and that outside wall, the way it's connected in there. And that allows that pedal bone to rotate, and in this case, the entire claw to rotate. In this case, though, I don't believe that's what caused this because like I showed before at the beginning of this video, the rest of the feet on this uh, heifer, this first calf heifer, appear to be normal. They don't show a lot of signs of that. So the more likely case is that she experienced some type of injury inside that claw to cause this malformity. And likely what happened is we have a flexor tendon inside there that kind of locks that claw in place, gives it stability. Chances are that somehow that became damaged and that's what has allowed the movement of this claw rather than laminitis. It's hard to say, it could have been, but typically when we see laminitis, we're gonna see it in all four feet. Now you might notice what I'm doing here is I'm doing a lot more modeling on this foot than you've seen me do in the past. And that's because of this rotation and where this overgrowth of horn is uh, accumulating on this foot. I use that the modeling approach here to give that area relief, to allow that foot when it rotates back based on that new angle that I put on that foot to, to have no resistance there, to keep that area completely uh, free from touching the ground. That way we don't have to worry about any forces being applied to make that foot kind of twist back the way it was. This is not going to be a permanent fix, however. This is just simply going to give it uh, time to try to 
more time, I should say, in the correct um, plane that we've put it in now. Because these structures are damaged on the inside of this foot, this claw is likely going to rotate again, which is frustrating, but that's all we can do. Here I'm just checking to see what my sole thickness looks like on this corkscrew claw. I've got some more I can take down here, so I'm going to do that. My goal here is to get this foot as balanced as possible to try to give her the most comfortable footing that she can. You'll also notice some redness in this claw, and that's from the pedal bone on the inside, putting unnatural pressures on that corium. That coloring then manifests into the new hoof horn that it produces. All right, let's put this foot down and see how well we've done balancing it up. If you remember at the beginning of the video, this is how that foot looked. And now, after trimming it, this is how it looks. It certainly looks more comfortable, but the true test will come when we let her go and we get to see how she walks on it. That's going to do it for today's video. As always, guys, thanks for watching. We will see you all on the next one.